Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. merciful and ever-loving God. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit this day. 
Fill us with your joy, your wisdom, and with your constant reminders that your presence will go with us. Thank you that your power is made perfect in our weakness. Thank you that you came to give new life, peace, and hope. Thank you, Father, that you know the end from the beginning and that everything under heaven is within your authority. Thank you that you are in control of all that is happening in our lives and in the wider world. May we trust you through all the circumstances that are going on presently. And may we seek your face in prayer and praise. We pray for a deeper faith and courage to show love to a hurting world, to be a beacon to those who are hopeless, to be a source of strength to the brokenhearted, to be a comfort for those who struggle and are in pain. You, O oh God, are Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. You are aware of all that concerns us, and you have a plan. So use us as a church for the building up of your kingdom, here on earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My name is Wensir Tambulumbula, I'm the Methodist Minister in Georgetown and Mount Cook Circuit in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I will do a short reflection for our daily devotion this afternoon. Our Bible reading this afternoon is from the book of Exodus chapter 12, verse 3 to verse 18. The Bible says, Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month, we are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. 
If a household is too small for a whole land, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. A lamb shall be divided in portion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A year, a year old male, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at the twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorpost and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its heads and legs and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning, until that remains, until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hands, and you shall eat it hardly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for it will pass through the lands of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be signed for you on the house where you live. Where I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is the word of God. God has been so faithful and working out its fulfillment of his promises to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, the people of Israel had become so great in number and the new pharaoh, one that did not know Joseph, had committed them to forced labor and ordered the killing of all Hebrew babies. God protected one of those boys named Moses, allowed him to be raised in Pharaoh's house and sent Moses to the wilderness for 40 years to prepare him for his God assigned task of leading God's people out of the land of Egypt. God had not forgotten his people for his promises. He had heard the cries, he now act to deliver them. A story of a man that was battling with a cancer and needed a double lung transplant. He asked God for new lungs, but fell out doing so. He confessed it is a strange thing to pray because someone has to die so that I might live. His dilemma highlights a basic truth of scripture. God uses death to bring life. We see this in the new story of this exodus. Born into slavery, the Israelites were languished under the oppressive hands of the Egyptians. Pharaoh would release his grip until God made it personal. Every eldest son would die unless the family killed a spotless lamb and slathered its blood across their doorpost. God is there to deliver them from the slavery of death. Yahweh, the one true God, the God of Israel, was bringing judgment upon the land of Egypt. Everyone in the land of Egypt, Israelite and Egyptian alike, was guilty of sin against the true God. His coming judgment would be swift and severe. The only means of avoiding God's judgment was faith in Yahweh and resulted in obedience to his substitutionary plan. The Israelites had to follow God's direction completely, the key steps of being the application of the blood to the doorpost of their houses. It was not the blood of animal that saved the Israelites. The thing that brought deliverance to the children of Israel was their faith in their one true covenant-keeping God and obedient to his command to apply the blood of the substitute, the lamb or goat, to the doorpost of their houses. As we also see in this verse, God was distinguishing himself from the false god of the Egyptians. Israel's faith was in the true God. The credit of God's deliverance of, for his people from slavery in Egypt could never gone to the people. 
The plan was God's plan. The power to execute the plan was God's power. The result of God's deliverance could only take place as he would bring it about. The people were simply to obey him from the heart of faith. As God delivered his people out of Egypt, as soon as they uh, crossed the dry ground of the Red Sea floor, the testimony of God's mighty power went through the land, as Rahab would later testify in Jericho, as in Joshua chapter 2, verse 10. God receives the glory through our own life as evidence of his salvation has been seen and declared to others. Brothers and sisters, today you and I have been born into the bondage of sin. Satan wouldn't release his grip on us until God made it personal, sacrificing his perfect son on the blood spattered arms of the cross. And Jesus called us to join him there. Paul explained, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. When we put our faith in God's spotless lamb, we commit to daily dying with him, dying to our sin, so that we might rise with him into a new life. We express this faith every time we say no to the shackles of sin and yes to the freedom of Christ. We are never more alive than we die with Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, not this community across Barbados, have you received God's deliverance, his salvation through the blood of his son, the spotless lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ? Do others see the evidence of power for the one true God in our lives? Life as you walk in faith, surrendering yourself to God and obedience to Him. As we conclude with this meditation, God set aside the people for Himself through Abraham. God promised to make them a people and give them a land. God used the blood of the Passover lamb to deliver His people from the bondage in Egypt, pointing ahead to another Passover lamb that we would deliver people not from physical slavery but from our spiritual slavery to sin all to the glory of his presence. As we finish off this meditation, let us reflect on this hymn, Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace in this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? That is the questions of life. Are we washed by the blood of the Lamb? Are we availing ourselves to the blood of Christ that will set us free from all our bondage of sin? Now let us hear this song as we finish off our, our meditation this, this, this afternoon.
Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul and clean, oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Let us have the benediction together. And now may the grace of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen and Amen. being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.